So the treatment of metastatic colorectal cancer uh, in the current uh, years is really thought of as more of a continuum of care. I mean, we have a lot of tools in our toolkit, uh, ranging from traditional cytotoxic chemotherapy agents such as 5-FU, oxaliplatin, arenotecan, uh, newer agents, TAS-102, regorafenib, anti-angiogenesis agents, uh, among which bevacizumab, aflibercept, ramucirumab. Uh, as well as um, biologic agents, including the anti-EGFR monoclonal antibodies, cetuximab and panitumumab. And most patients who are fit to undergo chemotherapy will receive the majority of these agents over the course of their disease. And uh, it's been well shown that sequential therapies and exposure to multiple agents is associated with uh, improved overall survival. When compared uh, doublet combinations of two agents for single agents, uh, doublet combinations are associated with higher response rates, uh, longer progression-free survival, and overall survival in some studies, though not all. So most patients who are deemed fit for combination therapy are offered uh, a standard chemotherapy backbone, usually 5-FU-based, such as Folfox, which is 5-FU leucovorin in combination with oxaliplatin. Uh, or Fulfiri, which is 5-FU leucovorin in combination with arena tecan. And depending on the disease characteristics, including uh, genomic biomarkers such as RAS or RAF mutation status, uh, now actually primary sidedness, whether the cancer originated from the left or right side, uh, these we have data to influence our choices. So these are drugs that may be combined with the chemotherapy backbone, such that Fulfox is commonly combined with bevacizumab, uh, and Fulfiri is also commonly combined with be bevacizumab. Similarly, both backbones can be used in combination with the anti-EGFR drugs. So in the U.S., uh, the most common first and second line backbones are 5-FU leucovorin oxaliplatin, uh, commonly known as Folfox, or 5-FU leucovorin arena tecan, commonly known as Fulfiri. And then at the discretion of the treating clinician, the incorporation of additional VEGF or EGFR antibodies is determined. Well, first of all, 5-FU is a staple uh, of colorectal cancer management. It's been around since the 50s. Uh, it's really a pyrimidine antimetabolite, so pyrimidine is one of the bases of DNA. Uh, and the drug is broken down into three essential metabolites on uh, administration. There is fluorodeoxy, uh, uridine monophosphate, FDUMP, fluorodeoxyuridine triphosphate, FDUTP, uh, and finally fluorouridine triphosphate, so-called so FUTP. And, and these three metabolites account for both uh, a lot of the toxicity as well as the efficacy. So uh, fluorouridine triphosphate, FUTP, uh, is incorporated and substituted for uracil and during RNA synthesis. And this is uh, thought to account for broadly the cytotoxic effects, as well as some of the toxicity of 5-FU. Uh, FDUMP actually inhibits thymidylate synthase, which is an enzyme that's critical for DNA synthesis. So you're uh, attacking both DNA and RNA uh, synthesis and repair to some extent in DNA. And this accounts for the anti-tumor efficacy largely from DNA synthesis inhibition. The toxic metabolites also mediate uh, the toxicities and the side effects. Uh, the breakdown of 5-FU is an enzymatic process, and the rate-limiting step is an enzyme called uh, dihydropyrimidine dehydrogenase, or DPD. And so anything that affects the clearance or the breakdown is a potential source of increased risk of toxicity and severe toxicity. So whether patients have uh, polymorphisms in any of these enzymes, things that they're born with, just like we all have polymorphisms in uh, proteins that may affect metabolism of drugs. This can lead to accumulation of toxic metabolites, which account for a lot of the toxicity. Um, or there can be inherent factors in the patient, such as uh, altered renal function or hepatic function, which affect the clearance because most of the dihydropyrimidine dehydrogenase breakdown, about 80%, uh, occurs in the liver. So you can see that there's multiple locations where problems could occur that lead to um, overexposure or increased risk of toxicity. The expected toxicities from chemotherapy uh, are 
broadly divided into, of course, the drug's mechanism of action, which accounts for some of the toxicities, uh, the patient themselves, whether they have existing comorbidities that might increase the risk, uh, and the dosing and administration route. Uh, with regards to combination regimens in colorectal cancer, uh, there is common and lower grade toxicities and then more severe or grade three, four toxicities. The most common toxicities that are low-grade and expected for most patients in combination regimens are uh, asthenia, which is generalized fatigue, uh, some degree of cytopenias, which is more common with infusional 5-FU than with capecitabine, uh, GI side effects, including uh, mild GI upset, ranging from that all the way to severe nausea and vomiting, as well as changes in bowel habits, ranging from um, mild loose stools to refractory diarrhea causing dehydration. Uh, irritation of the mucous membranes, uh, stomatitis or mucositis is well described uh, and particularly in patients who are um, at risk of more severe toxicities. The side effect profile also depends on the combination of drugs that are given. Uh, for example, 5-FU and arena TCAN has a different side effect profile than 5-FU or oxaliplatin where oxaliplatin, you expect some degree of cumulative neurotoxicity, whereas with arena TCAN, certainly we see higher rates of GI toxicity than neurotoxicity. So the combination can have additive uh, toxicities, especially if the drugs have um, overlapping toxicities as monotherapies. So in summary, combination effects, the most common side effects are uh, fatigue, some GI upset, some change in the blood counts and cytopenias, rarely significant neutropenia and mucosal irritation. Uh, capecitabine is slightly different. This is a prodrug of 5-FU, which is rapidly converted to fluorouracil uh, following absorption uh, and has an additional side effect. So it has slightly lower rates of uh, cytopenias and neutropenia, but significantly higher rates of what's called hand-foot syndrome. So this is a uh, painful, uh, dry cracking uh, of the skin of the hands and the soles of the feet, uh, sometimes associated with uh, pain as well. So the supportive care for chemotherapy uh, across all diseases, including advanced colorectal cancer, you know, starts with education. Uh, none of our drugs are without expected side effects, so we have to educate our patients about what to expect, what is common. For example, some fatigue, some loss of appetite are both common, so supportive care addressed at encouraging hydration and adequate nutritional intake is, is quite important. Uh, with the common uh, GI side effects, uh, we educate patients on management of this, including prophylactic anti-motility agents in some settings, or, or when to initiate anti-motility agents for diarrhea. Uh, prophylactic antiemetics for nausea and vomiting are given at the time of administration and then also to go home uh, so that patients can, you know, reactively take these medicines if they have nausea. Um, in terms of cytopenias, they're often not severe in combination therapy, so primary prevention with growth factors such as uh, Neupogen or Neulasta are generally not required in most practice settings. Uh, however, they may be added to the combination regimen as supportive care if patients experience neutropenia. So it's really education and then uh, symptom management directed at GI, uh, nausea side effects primarily. Uh, with regards to serious and potentially life-threatening reactions, you know, there's a, there's a spectrum of expected and common toxicities. So things that are outlier events deserve particular attention uh, in medicine beyond just chemotherapy, but people who have an extension of the normal event but to a much more severe degree or it occurs earlier. So most of these toxicities that we're talking about in terms of expected occur seven to 10 days or so after 5-FU administration. Things happening early, uh, within 96 hours, for example, um, are worrisome, things that are more severe, and then uncommon toxicities, for example, uh, cardiac toxicity, whether that presents as chest pain or arrhythmias or frank vasospasm, are rare, and that should be uh, a red flag for any clinician. Similarly, neurotoxicity presenting as um, confusion, uh, encephalopathy uh, noticed by family or patients uh, is a red flag that should alert clinicians to potentially severe toxicity. So it's along the spectrum of expected but much more severe and then early onset um, are things that we need to worry about.